a dog whistle can be like a secret handshake, right? And so in that sense, a dog whistle is a politician speaking in code that he knows the intended audience will understand, but that he hopes will be unintelligible to most of the general audience, right? And so this is George Bush, for example, when he talks about the wonder working power. Now, for most people, it's, it's an interesting alliteration, but it doesn't mean much. But for fundamentalist Christians, it was a way for him to signal, I'm, I'm with you, I understand your worldview, I represent it, I aim to enact it in government. That's dog whistle as a secret handshake. Racial dog whistles are different than that. The point of a racial dog whistle is to hide from the intended audience the fact that they're being manipulated in terms of their racial fears. So a racial dog whistle is more like a Pavlov's bell, right? You ring the bell and it and it leads to an association with food and the dog starts salivating. I mean, I hate the imagery at a certain point because we're saying people are dogs and, and, and it is really unfortunate of, of, of aspect of this metaphor, but it's important to understand. And in fact, it's so important to understand this is an intentional effort to manipulate the Republican base, or, or, or and Democrats, Bill Clinton would do this too. This is an intentional in effort to manipulate the base. And, and here's what I want to stress. So often when people talk about race in American politics, they respond by saying, we cannot believe that the vast majority of Americans, or that 60% of whites who vote for, for example, Donald Trump, uh, are bigots. And therefore, we reject the idea that race has any role. And I want to be crystal clear, I'm not saying they're bigots. And I'm not saying that they understand that they're being appealed to in racial terms. In fact, I'm saying the reverse. I'm saying these are good, decent, hardworking folks who are struggling to end, make ends meet, who feel tremendous anxiety about, society, uh, uh, anxiety about what's going on in society, both economically and demographically, and who, though they know themselves to be good people, and though they're really genuinely committed to not being racist, nevertheless are receptive to messages that play to underlying racial fears. And so these are the messages that say, Sharia law is coming, there's a Muslim in the White House, immigrants are committing violent, terrible crimes. There's no factual truth underlying any of those statements but it's a powerful narrative that has a fierce hold on the imaginations of many Americans. And politicians are constantly playing to it and continually stoking and renewing it.